All right, how's everybody doing? It looks like we are live. I'm just going to refresh the feed again, make sure we're good to go. But I hope everybody is having a wonderful morning today, in spite of current world circumstances. I hope everybody's happy, healthy, and well. All right, so this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks for joining me again. This is going to be a little 30 minute demo of birch trees. And what you're looking at on the screen, it looks like a bunch of lines on my canvas. I'm actually going to encourage you guys to just do this on your own and not go for the traceable. So all I want you to do is just take a marker or a pencil and you're going to draw one line, two, three, give a little space, four, five, six, and seven. On here, the ones that I have with X marks, these are going to be my trees. So my background will be in between them. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward. So I do want you to, to kind of just observe what you see on here and draw it on your canvas. They don't have to be exactly the same. And I will be using some brushwork and we're gonna keep the color palette pretty simple. I'm gonna have a light blue background. We will be putting um, white and then black kind of stripes or birch tree markings on here. And then we will finish up with a few little leaves um, in the yellow and the orange. So kind of hinting at fall. But like I said, just a really nice kind of simple birch tree painting. Now with all my videos, if you feel like switching up colors, please do that. Um, it is to your benefit to uh, change it up, maybe do different colors, add more colors than what I'm using, but just use this video as a base format for what you're creating at home. And um, you don't have to just use uh, paper, uh, paints, you can actually use anything that you have at home. And again, I'm just refreshing the feed one more time. It looked like it was kind of blurry on there. And I tried doing a little bit of autofocus. So let's see if that makes it a little bit better. I apologize to you guys at home. All right. So it looks kind of, it looks in focus on my screen. So give me a comment if it's looking okay on your screen at home. So what we're gonna start off with, and I'm gonna do this kind of um, a bit more watercolor style. I'm gonna kind of put a wet, thin, thin layer in between the trees. There we go, it looks a little bit better on the screen now. Okay, so I am using that large flat brush and I put a decent amount of water on my brush and I'm gonna pull some of the white aside. I'm gonna go for a light blue, grabbing a tiny amount of the blue and actually grabbed a little more than I wanted to, so grabbing some more white. And then we're going to put a kind of a thin layer on here and I do want it kind of watery so that way it'll dry a little bit quicker and I don't want it blending when I do the trees nearly as much. So when we get in here and if you're still kind of confused on which one's a tree, which one's a background, I'm just going to kind of put marks here for where I'm going to be putting the background so it makes it a little bit easier for you to see at home. All right, and then we're just going to kind of fill in that space. I am adding water, so it is gonna be pretty runny on here. So if you're painting on a vertical canvas, you may wanna flatten it just so you don't get a lot of the drips. And you are gonna notice that I'm gonna go over these lines and I may even overlap the trees because I'm gonna do a little bit of darker blue at the bottom and then lighter blue as it gets on top. And with acrylic paint, um, if you paint something you don't like or maybe you paint into an area that you weren't anticipating, and you need to cover it up, you actually just let the paint dry a little bit and then you can put another color on top of it. And remember to breathe if you are one of my beginner painters and you realize you're holding your breath right now, don't do that. I still do that sometimes when I paint, so <clears throat> maybe you never actually get out of it. We're human and we put a lot of stress on ourselves, so don't put stress on yourself as you're painting. I want you to pretend that you are an adult kindergartner, you're a five-year-old, you're escaping the world for a little bit, and you're just zoning out and having fun. And with that being said, thanks so much for joining me today. Hey, Janet, Jen, and Tammy, thanks for joining. Good to see you guys again. All right, so we kind of have a nice light base blue color on here and I did like I said applied it really thin I added more water and treated my acrylic paint more like watercolors and that is one of the nice things about acrylic paint it's rather versatile 
You can water it down and treat it like watercolors or gouache, or you can use no water at all and apply it a little bit thicker, just, just the paint by itself, and it's not quite like oil paint, but it's a little closer to that consistency. If you get heavy body acrylic paint and paint directly with that um, heavy body paint, that's gonna be the closest you can get to uh, the similarities of painting and oils without using oil paint. All right, so now I'm actually grabbing a little bit more blue. And again, I want it a little bit darker on the bottom and go in a little bit lighter as we go towards the top. And here's the part where I might actually overlap some of my trees. And when we get to our birch trees, I'm gonna put that white on there pretty thick, pretty heavy. Um, and I may do one of the trees with a palette knife just so you can see the difference and see which one you wanna try at home. So again, as we're adding these colors and I kinda want a bit of un uniformity with the darker blue at the bottom, it is okay if you start overlapping into your trees. And I am using light pressure and I'm trying to keep my brush in the same direction. And that just helps give a little more uniformity to our background. And I'm going to go just a little bit darker down here at the bottom. And again, you can introduce other colors in your painting. Um, you can go completely different colors, but just have fun with it. All right. And again, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day and hanging out with me in the morning. Um, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy having this schedule of, of showing up and doing a painting with you guys every day at 11. And I'm gonna keep with that schedule um, just cause it's, it's really nice and good for me. So hopefully it's good for you guys too. Oh good, yep, a few of you are saying that, yeah. 11 o'clock, this is a good habit to have, so thank you. All right, so I'm actually gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna go in with white from the top and kind of pull it down. And yeah, just cleaning that brush. I'm gonna grab that white just like the other videos. We're gonna slap it on there. Got a little bit much, too much there. And then we're gonna just do the same thing, just kind of pull it down to the bottom. And we are gonna have a few little branches coming off of these birch trees. So don't fall in love with any one aspect of your background. We're just getting it on there first to make it easier to apply our colors on top. All right, and if you need to, if you're finding that maybe you need to blend a little bit more then you can add a touch of water to your brush, but you never want it dripping wet. And that water just kind of helps soften up some of that color. And you only have like a small window that you can do this in before the acrylic paint dries and it just gets too frustrating to do. So again, just play with this. The more you do it, the more comfortable you kind of find your groove in it. And I'm actually wanting that bottom just a little bit darker. I do tend to, um, I personally like a lot of high contrast artwork. So I tend to bring that into my paintings. And high contrast just means having a uh, dark, darker space in your painting compared to a lighter space. So black and white, that's a lot of contrast. Purple and blue, complementing colors, um, or purple and yellow, and blue and orange, complementing colors, give another version of high contrast. All right, so not bad. Oh good, I'm glad the sun's out for you. And you guys get to paint outside, maybe get a little um, vitamin D with all this social isolation. That's awesome. All right, and the picture actually still looks pretty blurry on there. So I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna clean the lens really quick. So I apologize for the video shaking and um, see, getting covered for a moment. So hold on. All right, let's see if I can get that to focus. And let me know if that turned out a little bit better on your screen at home. Again, apologize for the technical difficulties. As I've set up in my new studio, I'm still getting used to things that I've got to get going. All right, oh, it looks clear to you guys. Perfect, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, maybe it's just my screen at the moment. Okay, so now that we've gotten the technical stuff cleared away, <laughs> we're gonna move into our trees and I'm actually gonna put white paint on here, pretty thick, pretty heavy. And then we're gonna use light pressure and some gray and black paint to kind of put our texture for our birch trees. So super exciting. I'm grabbing a big glob of white and we're just gonna be putting our base on there. And I am going right over those lines. And by applying my paint thicker, I should be compensating and covering up those lines entirely. So if you're using student grade paint, apply it pretty thick here, or you may have to apply two, po two coats. So you can stop the video, apply a couple of coats, and then come back and pick it up after your paint's um, a little bit more dry and you've got better coverage. All right, I'm actually gonna combine these two trees right here. We will separate them with some shadow in a moment. And again, I am overlapping a bit of the background with the thicker paint and kind of cleaning up the edge of my trees. So that way it is a little bit more crisp as it uh, reaches the background. Should you be painting quick like I am and you're moving right into your trees, um, if you get a little bit of the blue paint into your white, wipe your brush off, possibly wipe off that spot on your tree and reapply your paint. And again, remember to breathe. Oops, I got a little bit of blue paint in there. Start from our other blob of white. Nice. All right, and again, I am using light pressure with this thick paint, so that way it stays thick and my brush strokes are not showing up. If I was using more pressure, my brush, brush strokes would show up a lot more and it would even kind of be pushing the paint back to um, the actual canvas. And I wanna make sure this is fully covered. There we go, excellent. And if you are painting on a stretched canvas, remember to carry your colors around the sides, the tops and the bottom. That way it just looks nice when you hang it on your wall, having that color wrap around the edge. And it kind of gives the illusion that, you know, the image is larger than the actual canvas. And it's amazing how our brain fills in those details when we look at something. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna actually start doing some shading and we're going to go in with some gray and we're going to kind of separate these two trees that were happening here and i'm i am going to keep with um this middle sized brush and i'm going to make a super light gray and remember a tiny 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 amount of black goes a long way to make your gray and this is kind of in between a light gray and a medium gray and i'm just making a little bit more of it all right, and first what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate these two trees and the tree that would be behind this one is gonna be in a bit more of shadow. So with this gray paint, I'm actually just starting about in the middle, uh, maybe a little, little right of middle for these two trees. And it's important that I keep that kind of pure white on the left-hand side. There we go, and again, just kind of softening it into that. But what I, what I did here is with the gray, it pushes this tree back and then now this tree pops forward. So I am actually gonna make a slightly darker gray. Do it one more time, just a little bit closer. And again, you're gonna notice that your light gray is blending in with that white paint underneath. So your color is gonna shift and change. So adjust for what you need. And again, breathe, keep that light pressure. This does get easier and more comfortable with practice. And while we're all staying at home, these are great things to do to just get more control over your skills um, and kind of body functions too. So the more you do this, the more you may actually realize something else that you do on a regular basis becomes a little bit easier. 
So now I'm actually going to be putting this gray in a few other spots on the other trees. And just do your best to kind of look, observe where I'm placing this gray and place it just in similar areas on your painting. And if you have been to a birch tree forest or aspen trees, you know that they have so much cool texture and lines um, and gradations in their bark that you don't really have to do a whole lot to make it look like a birch tree to where our eye is gonna fill in that information. So now I'm going back with light pressure and just kind of on the perimeter of where this gray is, just softening it into the white underneath. And these are good points to maybe get out of your chair after you do a few of these, look at your painting from about four to five feet away and observe, all right, are you starting to see a little bit of depth? Is it making a little more sense? Um, do you need to go back and adjust anything? Painting's never about being perfect, but just kind of learning how you look at things and maybe seeing stuff from a new perspective. All right, so now we're actually gonna add a few of these branches that are gonna be coming off the tree. And again, my background, it's starting to dry a little bit. Maybe the bottom's still a little tacky, but we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put some really thick, heavy white on top of the background, and then we'll use a little bit of our shading to, um, uh, to, to give it some depth. Sorry, I am at a loss for words a few points today. All right, so again, making these branches, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to go straight in any one direction. Branches grow in multiple shapes, sizes, directions. They basically are growing towards the sun, given uh, the position that they may be in. And we do want some of these going off the edges of the canvas. And again, these are another good spots to kind of get out of your chair and look at a distance and go, all right, do I need something in this area? Do I need another little branch over here? Um, again, trust yourself. And let's see, let's get a few more up here. Not bad, I think we've got a healthy looking birch tree forest happening here. All right, so I'm gonna put that brush away. I'm gonna move into the pointy brush. And now we're actually gonna take that pure black and we're gonna put a few little lines and these are, instead of being vertical, these are gonna be horizontal lines. These are almost like bands that are going around each of the uh, trees. And it de definitely helps give it that distinguishing birch tree effect. So again, these don't have to be perfect and we're getting our lines in here first and then we will soften them at a later date. So if you even think about maybe like, these are zebra stripes on your tree makes it kind of fun to think about. We need a few on our branches. And one of my favorite aspects about the birch trees is their high contrast of their bark. You know, this really intense um, black next to the bright white with a few little shades of gray in there. And really kind of any pattern goes. You can do whatever you feel like making your zebra birch trees right now. All right, oh good, it's looking good on the screen. I just took a quick peek. I do get a little distracted if I keep the screen on too long while I'm painting. It's like, oh yeah, I'm talking. I gotta, I gotta keep going. So. All right, 
All right, again, don't think too much. You're a five-year-old, you're escaping the world for a little bit. The rest of the world will still be there to pick back up when this is done, unfortunately. And I do like that today's painting is using what we call a limited palette. Um, just very select colors. We're not using the full color scheme with our blue, black, white, and then hints of yellow and orange. As we start, as I start doing more and more of these, I am going to try to keep with some themes and work with specific um, complementing colors, split complementary, limited palette. Maybe we'll do some black and white stuff. Um, but I will make these even more so of kind of foundational art classes. So that way you're learning more and more each time you watch one of these. All right, coming along. Our funky looking zebra trees. And again, at home, just mimic to the best of your ability. And if you, again, if you want to switch out colors, I've seen people do, instead of using black, maybe you use purple, maybe you're using blue. Um, I've seen yellow trees, multiple colored backgrounds, kind of anything. All right. Not bad for a base of our birch trees. So now I'm actually, I'm going to do two things to show you. You've got a few options. One, I'm going to show an option with a knife. And the other option, I'm going to show with the brush. And likely I will finish off with using the brush, just because that's kind of where I'm hanging out today. But I did want to show you with the knife version, just so in case you want to give this a try at home. So I do like the larger knife, just because it's got that nice long edge. And you're going to hold it pretty flat to your painting and with light pressure we're just going to do a quick little pull um, and what that's going to do is kind of squish the black paint together we'll get a little bit of gray and then it softens some of those lines so i usually like to start from the right hand side because it's easier to pull this direction and i just kind of put my knife on the edge and then just kind of scoot it across so give it a try Oh yeah, I forgot how much I like this. Maybe we'll do the rest with the knife. <laughs> and this is part of the art world where you go, oh, maybe I'm not going to do it this way. And then you give it a try and you go, oh, maybe we'll finish that way. And then if you need to, you can actually take your knife, wipe it off before you go to your next section. I'm going to do the little branches as well. And again, this just gets you kind of comfortable with holding the knife in different directions and using different tools. And I think I'm going to change. I'm going to do all these with the knife. I'm really liking that effect. Um, if you don't have a knife, you can do the same thing with the brush. And again, you're kind of holding it flat like this. And you just squish and kind of pull. Squish and pull over. If you do not have a knife at home and you want to do it with the knife, you could use an old credit card or one of those little... Um, squeegee things that comes when you put the glass protector thing on your phone. It's usually a nice little solid plastic thing. Um, it's a hard plastic works well. You can even use a piece of cardboard, though it will start to warp with the moisture from the paint. But get creative. You don't have to just use the tools that I talk about. And you can find things around the house that will work in creative ways as well. And again, remember if you are using the knife and the brush, or the brush, wipe your brush off um, before you kind of move into the next section. And remember to breathe, relax. These are fun, simple little birch trees. And if maybe you're doing this, you go, oh, maybe I want another branch somewhere else. Leave the paint that's on your knife or brush and just add the other ones. That way you have a little mixture of both your, uh, 
grays, your whites and blacks in there. Okay. Oh, awesome. Glad you were already doing this, Jen. Very cool. And yeah, it did look, that picture that you sent me did look like uh, you used the knife and it just makes it so you can go along so quickly. Awesome. Yeah, and Janet, yeah, you could do little raw sienna in there instead of gray. Yeah, feel free to change your colors to what you want for your trees. And then, like I said, I did see somebody do these instead of using white, they used purple. Uh, another person used like some light yellow and then some shades of gray on there, but feel free to switch out um, any of these colors to make it just a more colorful painting. All right, so this part's kind of fun too. I'm gonna go back to that middle size brush. We're gonna put some fall leaves in here and we'll be starting with the yellow. And we are gonna be doing this kind of like that stabbing, that dot pointillism method again. And it looks like I got a little bit of water on my plate. So if that happens, if a drop of water gets on there, it does cut it back down to the canvas. You have to actually make that color again and just place it right on top. So this is where you get to practice color matching. There we go. And should you do that, and you don't want to color match your background, you just make sure you put some foliage on top of that. So kind of like that Portlandia episode where they're like, put a bird on it, put a bird on it. Um, when you're doing trees or something or painting and you've got an area that you need to cover up, just put another element on top of it if it works for your composition. All right, so with this one, um, we do have some pretty thick paint on here, so we don't want to mix too much together. So we're going to be kind of placing it and pulling the brush right back and placing it and pulling it right back. And likely we will be wiping our brush off, grabbing more paint, placing it, wiping it off. So we're going to get this nice little formula going. All right, so let's see. Let's start off here. And again, I'm just kind of applying them kind of thick, imagining that we've just got a few branches with some leaves, some fall foliage on it. And if you want to make your foliage uh, red, yellow, green, uh, purples, feel free to change and switch up colors. If you do not want foliage on your trees at all, you can completely skip this step. All right, and again, just noticing some of that black getting in with my yellow paint, so wiping that off. We will put some orange over these just to give a little hint of that depth and to break up the yellow space. And right here, yep, where I had that dot, just putting some yellow on top of it. And again, this is another point to step away from your canvas, look at the balance of your composition and figure out where you need more or possibly less foliage. It is harder to remove this once you've applied it. So it is easier just to find out where you need more foliage. And again, it's just kind of nice to just literally stab your canvas. And there's no like major discerning order that I'm going with. I'm just kind of randomly. I do like having a bit of an open area so you can appreciate the blues a little bit more. Um, but I have seen some paintings where, you know, the whole top and bottom are covered with the foliage. Totally your call. All right, so now I'm gonna be going with the orange, same thing, and it will start to mix a little bit with that yellow and changing the color. So I won't need to clean it off as much. And if this orange is too bright for you, you can do a mixture of yellow and orange and tone it down, or you can even do red, make it a little more bold. Looking good. And I like when I look at it on the monitor and um, 
literally see a slight, I think, what is it, maybe a 10 second, five to 10 second delay. Um, but I, when I look at it on the computer, I can, that's when I'm seeing it from a distance. So when you take your progress pictures with your phone and you look at it on your cell phone, it is the same thing as looking at your painting from about 20 feet away without getting out of your chair. So do utilize um, the power of technology and what you can observe things with. All right, so that does actually keep us for a very simple, simple perch, birch tree painting. And if you guys are inclined, please email me photos of what you paint. Uh, feel free to change colors. Uh, email is paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. And thank you again for letting me practice these 30 minute demos. It looks like I will hopefully be picking up another uh, paint along project to where I have to do 30 minute projects. So you guys have been great for practicing. And let's see, tomorrow's painting, I believe we are doing the Tuscan Hills. Uh, it was not a viewer request, but it was one that I had on the list. And the last landscape painting we did uh, seems to be getting a lot of traction. So I was going to throw a few more landscapes in there. But please leave a comment on what you'd like me to paint in the future. And I'll get a calendar a couple weeks out so you can see what we'll be doing. But thank you guys so much for joining me this morning and all your support. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day. So thanks so much. And I'll see everybody tomorrow. Cheers.